center circle against Pat Ewing and the 1982 NCAA championship is underway. Hancock off to Eric Smith. Back out to Hancock. This is Fred Brown who played so well and that went over Louisville. Sleepy Floyd, over 2,000 points in his career at Georgetown. The all-time leading scorer has to get it back out to Brown and North Carolina playing some tough man-to-man defense into Ewing. Straight man-to-man. Perkins letting Ewing handle it, shooting that fadeaway jumper. Now here comes the full court pressure. It's Perkins back there to help the guards. Ball's gone. Fred Brown almost came up with a steal, but Ewing, that's got to give that young freshman some confidence to hit that first shot. He had eight points in the first game and ten rebounds. Matt Doherty, rebound Ewing, and Ewing's intimidating presence has already been established in this game. You can see right there, Georgetown going to give Doherty the shot early in the game to show that he can make it. Georgetown came into this tourney shooting over 63% for the field. Boy tries to follow his own shot. Jimmy Black saves it in. Here comes Black. He's in the extension of the coach on the floor. Off to Doherty, who has not been shooting as well in the final four. Worthy. Now the Brown who reached in and took it away from him. Brown had a great game here Saturday. He has terrific hands as far as quickness goes. Brown cuts it off to Hancock. And a rebound from Doherty. Jimmy Black hit the deck underneath the basket. No whistle on the play. And here comes Black. Black has been shooting very well in this tournament. Extremely well. 83 to percent to be exact, and that'll be goaltending. But I'll tell you, Ewing is up around that cylinder. Well, he is, and that was not a wise play on his part. James Worthy will not be intimidated with that type of goaltend because the ball was obviously on the way down. Pat Ewing was right under the basket. Boy, does that shot show you how high up in the air he got at seven foot. The freshman from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Beautiful pass from Floyd into Eric Smith. Eric Floyd, much underrated playmaker. Here's the full court pressure. Eric Smith, he can play the defense. He was second in assists on the team, and what an assist that was. Jordy with pressure from Smith. Look at Smith. He is really tough defensively. Brings it out to Jordan. Jordan's down in the zone. Now Hancock much more aware of where Worthy is. Now they man to man. Man to man defense. Perkins, and there's Ewing having to go out on Perkins. Georgetown the 4-2 lead. Black tries to tie it up. Ewing with yet another rebound. Off to Eric Smith. Smith to Hancock. He traveled to the ball. Are you surprised, Billy, that Georgetown is in a man this early? Well, they're showing some different looks. There's John Thompson. They're still in the 2-2-1 with a little diamond full court pressure, but it hadn't bothered North Carolina yet. Both these teams look great boys. John Thompson has worked with his young club all year to come up with that, and Ewing with another steal. That's two turnovers against North Carolina, and Ewing is playing remarkably well. Both teams are very tight. Here's Ewing again, and he has four points. He was not getting that shot against Louisville on Saturday. Already he's moved in and picked up four points. 6-2, Georgetown. Now with Ewing back, there's a two-on-one. Let's see if North Carolina tries to take it to him. Doherty shooting 43% of the tournament, brings it out to Perkins, who had 25 points and 10 rebounds. And that win against Houston, broken up, saved by Perkins, almost stolen that time by Fred Brown. Here's James Worthy, and that'll be another goaltending. Patrick Ewing is standing right under the basket. John Thompson's trying to work the officials a little bit here, but you can't block those kind of shots against a Worthy or Perkins when you're standing right under the basket because their ball's going to come down quickly, and there you see it. Boy, is he getting up there, though. Worthy is challenging him thus far. Georgetown with a two-point lead, 6-4. 16.45 to go in the first half. Ed Spriggs has checked in. He has a basketball. Rebound. Jordan tries to get it. It's off of Eric Smith. Ed Spriggs had an excellent game on Saturday. He comes in, gives him the twin pillars in there with Pat Ewing. He had five points and seven rebounds in that win that they had Saturday. He is 26 years old, a co-captain of Georgetown. Here is Black. What a matchup this is going to be. Floyd and Black all evening long. Perkins a long ways out for the pivot. Rebound cleared by Eric Smith. Smith out of Potomac, Maryland. Here is Sleepy Floyd. He lost it. It will be North Carolina's ball. Pretty good job by Jimmy Black. Right now, both teams have not settled down into what they would like to do. You can see the nervous energy coming out here. From above, high above here in the Superdome, you see the action. Jimmy Black, uh, he controlled that well. Well, the reason he wasn't backcourt, the ball hadn't come over yet. But how 
good his body control was. That ball was tipped out of bounds by Georgetown. North Carolina will reset it at the 16.05 mark. New rule in college basketball for this year. Hadn't come into play that much, but both feet and the ball must be over half court in order for you to be in a backcourt situation. Perkins brings it back out to Jimmy Black. Black out of the Bronx in here's New York. The, here's the zone. Now you can see it right there. Ewing in the middle. It's a big zone back line, a 2-1-2. Two, two. Boy, they pack it in with Ewing in there a lot of times as tough. Spriggs right now doing the job for him. Rebound followed by Jordan. He can't get it to drop. Well, it wasn't blocked by Ewing, but Ewing intimidated and made him put it up there with the left hand. Brown out of control. He walked to the ball. Gary, both teams are very, very tight. John Thompson really hot with the official, but it was a good call. Brown trying to make his reverse. John, just a moment ago, was windmilling his arms, not happy about the third turnover. His team has already committed in this game at the 15-34 mark. Anthony Jones will now check in. A freshman out of Washington, D.C., Brown, who turned the ball over, will check out. Jones had four points and three rebounds in that win against Louisville. When Spriggs comes into the game, it really makes this press tough because he is so big, you have a hard time throwing the ball over and you still have Ewing at the end. There's a lob. North Carolina's missed three straight from the field. They're two of seven. They shot 59% in their win, but they are the only team thus far in this final four to shoot better here in the Superdome since the tournament play began. Great help by Eric Smith defensively. This is what they're known for, Billy. They just don't let you get that ball inside. And North Carolina not losing their presence right now, but Georgetown playing great defense. Floyd reaching in, tough shot by Worthy, tipped off almost and in by Spriggs, and that'll go off of Georgetown. Spriggs almost tipped it in. And the reason that was not a goal, 10, is because the ball had no chance to go in. We're going to have a timeout. 14.52 to go in this championship game for the Superdome. A two-point lead for Georgetown. This is the way Georgetown destroyed the West. Their margin of victory of 16 points over Wyoming, Fresno State, and Oregon State, and then defeating Louisville here on Saturday. On the other hand, North Carolina coming out of the East region. They were the top seed there. Tough win over James Madison, Alabama, Villanova, and defeating Houston. Thus far, Billy, in five minutes of play, surprisingly, there's been no fouls in this ball game. People haven't really taken the ball at anybody. Ewing's doing a good job occupying all that space as usual in the middle. Buzz Peterson, number 22, a freshman has checked in. There he is with a basketball. Here is Doherty. And there's that zone, extremely active. Spriggs coming out to play 25 feet away from the ball. They don't give you any easy shots. And Ewing will jump out there, too. That is really versatility to have your two men that quick, that agile, to jump out at you. North Carolina showing good patience, trying to tie this ball game up. Nice pass to Perkins, and he is hammered. That'll be a foul on Pat Ewing. High above him that time. Perkins challenged him. Perkins did challenge him, but he was a little hesitant to take it in for the dunk. It's a beautiful dish off here by Worthy. When he gets Ewing up there to be occupied, Perkins goes right in, gets hit with, hit with the body. Perkins will go to the line, a brilliant game that he had in Saturday's action. 25 points, 10 rebounds. He has been shooting from the free throw line 80% from the tournament play. Look at that. That's the way this whole North Carolina team has been, Billy. They're shooting above their regular season stat. Well, they're playing very tight right now, and I'm sure Dean Smith recognizes that. You know, Gary, I talked to an awful lot of basketball people out here over the weekend after the game Saturday, and most of them felt, going way back to Hank Ibe and all the rest, that that game with Louisville might have been the most tenacious defense by two teams ever seen in Final Four action. It was not artistic, but it was intense. Anthony Jones, oh, he loves to shoot the ball from there. And Georgetown, after those missed free throws, has jumped to an 8-4 lead. Doherty gets it into Jimmy Black. Nice pass, baseline, Jordan, and we're going to have goaltending again. That's three goaltending calls off Pat Ewing. That's a very significant call right there. What are they going to do with Ewing when he goes up there to try to swat these shots away? Now, he has to be a little bit more careful because if they're going to call it tight, looking like goaltending most of the time, which they have been, that ball had hit off the backboard and was coming down, and he might as well forget the play. But I'll say one thing for Ewing. He is not timid. Nice pass to Eric Smith. He cuts the middle. And it's 10-6 in favor of the Hoyas. Four points for Eric Smith. Gordy at 6'8", handling the ball extremely well. 
Black back to Doherty. Doherty's kind of the final piece in this Carolina puzzle. He fits in so well. Here we go. Checking Spriggs out, going all over the floor, man to man. They had the right idea, but Doherty cannot handle the pass. That's three turnovers against Carolina. Fred Brown is going to check back in, and Eric Smith will catch a breather. North Carolina has not put in the ball in the hole. They've had three goaltending calls. That's how they've scored their points. They're playing very tentatively so far. I'd say Georgetown's come out of the box with a much more positive-looking game. 13-22 to go first half. Tough shot. Boy, off balance still gets it. There's another example. Georgetown with a 10-6 lead. I should say 12-6 lead at the 13-11 mark. North Carolina under Dean Smith has never won the championship game. The fourth time they've been in this championship game. Michael Jordan. Nice pass to Perkins. Ewing got a piece of it. Perkins. Ewing again. And out of the fourth goaltending call. That's an excellent call. John Thompson really trying to work these officials. Because he doesn't want Patrick, who's just a freshman, to get disturbed. Look at John. Look at Brian Egg on his forehead. In the air before this is over. Well, here it goes. On the way down, no question about that. But look at how high Ewing is. He's got his head almost even with that rip. 12-8, four goaltending calls. Ewing at the other end. Jones tries to bottle, but Worthy coming out of there. Off it comes to Doherty. Steal attempt by Brown, and Brown ever present on defense. He led this team in steals, and you can see how alert he is. He is an amazing, Freddie Brown is amazing in this respect. Although he doesn't have blazing speed, he has great hand quickness and tremendous anticipation for a ball play. He's that streetwise kid out of the Bronx in New York. Dean Smith, his best record ever coming into this game, 31 and 2, 15 wins in a row. Well, they've gone almost eight minutes without a ball going through the net, as you pointed out, Gary, which is highly unusual. And Very tentative play by North Carolina. That's four turnovers. Dean Smith has got to be concerned. Floyd in trouble. Got the ball to Brown. Blocked by Perkins. Hits off of North Carolina. Coming back into the ball game. We're going to have a substitution. Well, for the first time, actually, Bill Martin will come in. Ewing will go out. Now, what do you think John Thompson will tell Patrick Ewing? Well, I think he's just going to calm Patrick down. He has uh, been a tremendous force in this game so far. Matter of fact, he didn't even talk to him as he walked by him. I think he's happy the way Patrick's playing, and his team looks very positive right now. North Carolina in the 2-3 zone on the out-of-bounds. Four-point lead for the Hoyas, 12-10 to go. This is for the NCAA championship. Red Brown out to Sleepy Floyd. Floyd in tournament play has been brilliant. He had 22 points against Oregon State, his best. That almost was offensive interference by Bill Martin. See Here comes Doherty. He challenged Floyd, didn't he? First time that North Carolina has taken the ball to the defense, and not by any mere coincidence, Ewing is not in the game. And that is the first field goal they have scored that wasn't awarded to him by goaltending. Floyd brings it out to Brown. Sleepy Floyd went right through the double team trap that time. He's a very wise basketball player. Here is Floyd Black. Let's him get by, and he can't let him get that step. Floyd took advantage of it. Lately, Floyd gives him a 14 to 10 lead. Jordan out to Doherty. Now let's see if Worthy gets into the ball game with really starts getting for that ball now that Ewing is not in there. Ed Spriggs is the big man in the middle at six foot nine. Martin's a big tough performer at six seven, the freshman. He's also from the Washington, D.C. area. You see Jones at 6'6 outside, so they still have some pretty good size in there. Excellent team size. There's Worthy inside. He gets out of some difficulty. Doherty saves it. Again, James Worthy. Almost impossible to block the shot. That's what I expected. Then to go to Worthy when Ewing sits. When he shoots that ball, he shoots it at the zenith of his jump. And you see John Thompson has Ewing and Eric Smith right back, ready to come in again. He just wanted to give him a little blow. Here's Briggs. Gets off to Bill Martin. A little heavy on the shot. Briggs has it again. He's a steady influence. Sleepy Floyd, and Floyd, who was 3 of 11 Saturday, is shooting the odd lights out right now. He has three field goals. It's 16-12 Georgetown. Briggs asked to come out. He's a little tired right now. He had the great game Saturday as well. Here's Worthy. There shows his range. Worthy with eight points. Worthy this year averaging only 15-3, but Billy, the stats really don't show how good he is. That's interesting. John Thompson walking up the court 
with Freddie Brown trying to give the instructions and still staying within his bench area. Boy, he's worked hard on maintaining poise, and this club has thus far done that. 9.50 to go, first half. Floyd is three of four from the field in this game. Here he is, he's gonna pop another one. Oh, he's on tonight. Four of five for the consensus All-American. Gastonia against Gastonia on the last two shots. And getting the better at Jimmy Black so far, who has been outstanding both against Stranger and then the other day against Rob Williams. Today, Sleepy Floyd getting the better of him. Sleepy Floyd hit seven of eight from the free throw line and down the stretch was a big factor in that win. But tonight, he's back on track shooting from outside. And again, the good defense by Georgetown. Look at John Thompson in the background standing up and orchestrating all this. There he is. Look at him. John Thompson wants more pressure on the ball. Perkins brings it out. Black, here's Worthy. He's the bread and butter man right now. Sensational turn because he had Jones coming from one side, kind of had to feel the man there and spun in the other direction. There's your time remaining. Billy, do you realize it's Worthy and Floyd going after each other right now as far as the point production? Broken up by Perkins. It'll be Georgetown's ball. One of the things everybody's been talking about in the dome is the depth perception on the shot. We also notice that there is a problem sometimes on the lob passes, and that might have been the case right there for Springs. We saw that in that Louisville-Georgetown game in particular. Timeout, a two-point lead for Georgetown. You're looking at Hank Nichols, one of the three officials working this game, and they're not here by happenstance. They earned it. You better believe it. Officials work their way through the tournament. They're judged each and every game. After the first round games, they're judged as a team. And an, and an added thing about Hank Nichols, he's a teacher at Villanova University. He was one of the referees in the finals of the NIT also. I don't know if any man has ever worked both the NIT championship and the NCAA championship. Not in recent memory, anyway. And this is his second time to the championship game. Pat Ewing has come back into the ball game for Georgetown at the 8.43 mark. Do you realize, Billy, we've had only one foul in this ball game? We've played 11 plus minutes, and it's been a physical game. Anthony Jones tries to follow. Oh, great hands by Jordan. Jordan just reached in and slotted it away. Here's Jimmy Braddock, who's checked in a junior. The bench for North Carolina hasn't produced that much this year. The starting five has produced 88% of their offense coming into this game tonight. Worthy. Yes, oh, that's and that's five up. Yeah, that'll, that'll bring John Thompson up. Is that five? No sense. That's five. Now, pretty soon, you got to ask a young man at 18, are you going to keep it up? There he is, Pat Ewing, getting it on the way down. I think they've all been very good calls and not very difficult calls to make. Ten of the 18 points have come on goaltending, and we're tied up, 18 all. There's a double-team trap by North Carolina. Bill Martin, both the freshmen missing shots, Jones and Martin. Eight minutes to go, first half. Braddock will back it out. To Worthy. Worthy, who in the early going has really been carrying this ball club offensively. He has 12 points. Floyd, on the other hand, has eight points for Georgetown. Nice back down door try by Jordan that time, but Sleepy Floyd showing great defense. You see Ewing go around. He almost came up with a steal. That will go off of Georgetown. Substitution, Ed Spriggs will check back in for the Hoyas. And going out of the ball game is going to be Bill Martin, the freshman who missed the shot a while ago. You know, Worthy isn't shooting too bad in this game. He's six of seven. <laughs> He's, uh, what, four for four with Pat Ewing getting a piece of it. And North Carolina has now hit their last six shots in a row from the field. Here's Worthy. Somehow he doesn't come up with the ball. Nice the job by Ewing. Two on one. Eric Smith, tough shot to hit. A very good move by Eric Smith to pull up short rather than try to take that into the defense. That gives the Hoyas a two-point lead, 20 to 18. Six points in the game for Eric Smith, the co-captain, along with Ed Spriggs. Here's your man-to-man, -man, Ewing out there on Perkins. Now, Perkins is drawing him away from the basket. Braddock into Perkins. Perkins out of Latham, New York. Vastly nice. improved. Nice help that time in there by Eric Smith. Perkins this year gained about 25 points. Oh, that was That's a double tougher. dribble. And Braddock almost in trouble with Floyd on him. I think the official felt that the ball was tipped. And there's a foul on Eric Smith. And that will be his first personal foul, only the second foul. 
And we have 6.52 to go in this first half. Now, even though Jimmy Braddock did not do anything on, that will show up statistically, I thought he handled the ball club pretty well when he came in there, and that's what Dean Smith was asking, a few minutes to spell Jimmy Black. Bill Guthrie, his assistant, along with Dean Smith, 21 years. He's been in the quest for an NCAA championship title. And right now, his team down by two. Worthy with Spriggs playing tough on him. Worthy loves to isolate you. Beautiful pass to Jordan. He changed hands, couldn't get it in a foul. Well, Patrick Ewing again, although he didn't get a piece of that, he's altered Jordan's shot for the second time tonight. You'll see it right here. Worthy trying to get the back door cut with a little screen. Jordan had already screened. He had to use the left hand. Ewing gets a piece. Now Worthy goes down and gets grabbed on the arm. Substitution, Chris Brust is checking in. Brust number 45, Perkins will check out at the 639 mark. Black will trigger. Jimmy Black led the ACC in assists this year. Brings it out to Jordan. Jordan had 18 points in the game on Saturday. How about Ewing stepping up the help there all the way from under the basket. Now we get a little zone trap. Gordy tipped up and in by Worthy. I should say slammed in by Worthy. That's a remarkable play. 14 points. He's 7 of 8 from the field. Worthy is now in the man-to-man -man situation trying to guard Ewing. And inside, Brust is guilty of fouling. Okay, we're going to see that last play by James Worthy. Excellent position to rebound. Here's the block out, not quite there. Worthy grabs it and then just forces it down into the rim. He must have unbelievably large hands, strong hands to pull that off. John Thompson, 40 years old, a winningest coach in the history of Georgetown. Four straight NCAA appearances. And a steal by Buzz Peterson. But and coming up is Freddie Brown. Brown. Brown is going to challenge him, and that basket, we'll see if it counts. It's going to be charging. I think the basket should count. Should count. Yep, good call. So the charging foul, but the basket being awarded. Go back to the steal, though. There you had Peterson had an opportunity with an easy steal, and Fred Brown just took it away from him. Now here's the call. Worthy is set. No question about it. Ball released. Great call by the official. Third team foul now against Georgetown. Six minutes up to Peterson. Peterson picked up by Brown. Spriggs really playing worthy tight. He's just out as close as he can possibly guard him. Look at the chesting job here by Eric Smith on Doherty. They're right under their chin. Peterson. Peterson comes up with it. Brust. Right now he's gone to his bench with Peterson and Brust in there. Trying to give his starters some breathing room, and oh, yeah, again, and Worthy with a beautiful arching shot has 16 points in the game. Sensational defense, too, by Spriggs against him. Went straight up chest to chest. It's all tied, 22 all. Worthy with 16 of those 22 points. Eric Smith on the move, top shot, he pulls it off. And Georgetown bumps it up to a two-point lead. Eight points in the game for Eric Smith. Oh. Peterson on the drive, he was intimidated by Ewing that time. Floyd, he kicked it. They had the ball, but they were fighting amongst themselves. That was a pretty good move by Peterson, though. He took the ball to Ewing. He had in mind going ahead right at him, and then he had to put that long arching shot up there. Isn't it amazing how Pat Ewing can get oh. down the court? He never seems to be out of position. Now some substitutions. Worthy's going to check out of the ball game. Sam Perkins, you're looking at him. What I think we're seeing Dean Smith doing with his bench right now is the other day, Saturday, he went with the first five the entire second half. There never was a substitution. He's getting them in there now. Nice back door. Brust on a fine assist to Jimmy Black. So Brust comes in. First two points in the ball game now for Jimmy Black. And other than Worthy, the other four starters have scored two points each. So it's been Worthy carrying them offensively. 24 all. Floyd against Jordan. Perkins with a rebound. That's one of the few that Sleepy Floyd hasn't gotten to go through. Has a very difficult shot going down in the baseline. Now with a chance to take the lead is North Carolina. Look at Ewing coming out from the basket, 30 feet away. Eric Smith staying with Peterson. Here is Jordan. Reach around by Floyd. Partially blocked in time by Ewing. Brust has it. He's fouled, and Brust is doing a very good job for North Carolina. Pat Ewing a little bit upset there, getting a little frustrated. Now, anytime Ewing gets frustrated, John Thompson.
Brunson covers. Here we see it inside. Brush gets the ball. Ewing comes down. He did get a little piece of the arm. It might have been a brush, but he did get a piece. Should Ewing, be two shots. That's his second foul. A two-shot foul coming up. Right now, a break in the action. Four, oh, four to go in this first half. And it's all tied up. 24 all. The fans here in the Louisiana Superdome have an added advantage. They can watch those beautiful TV screens about 80 feet above the playing floor. We noticed on Saturday and also tonight that they react to those replays. Some of the plays that Worthy made and some that we're seeing here today. At the line will be Brust, and he hasn't been at the free throw line very much this year. Well, he really hasn't. He's been there 20 times, made nine for only 45%. This young fella came to college with uh, quite a reputation, but he came already injured, and he never was able to quite get himself into the playing condition that was expected. Well, he made a big assist a while ago, but he doesn't get the free throw. It's still 24 all. And North Carolina, who's been brilliant from the line, is 0 for 3 in this game thus far. There's that stat right up there. Rust from Babylon, New York. Wait a minute. A basket workout, and coming in will be Worthy. Rust will check out. So James Worthy back in. Now you can imagine that Dean Smith will keep this starting five in there up till halftime and let them take their break. A 2 2 1 full court press. The Tar Heels with a one point lead, less than four minutes to go in this first half. Gene Smith Carolina. has checked in now. North Carolina in the zone. Look for Sleepy Floyd trying to get open. This is Smith, number 22, an excellent defensive player. You see the time remaining, the lower right hand portion of the screen. Now, what North Carolina will do now, they'll shade away from Gene Smith and let him put up a shot. Ewing, that's the way he started the ball game. Right there at that spot, and that gives the Hoyas a one point lead. Nice release by Pat Ewing. Ewing with six points. He's had five goaltendings at the other end. Here is Worthy against Ewing. Rebound, Jordan. He changed hands and hit it. Left hand. hand. Very underrated rebounder, and all year long, people don't aren't aware of his tremendous leaping ability, and from the guard position at 6'5", he's a dangerous rebounder. Jordan was an outstanding baseball player in high school. He has five rebounds in this game. Ewing has to kick it out this time. Smart play by Ewing, not to occupy that ball. Carolina with a one-point lead, less than three minutes. That shot was partially blocked. Hancock put it up. Here comes Jimmy Black. Floyd is back. Worthy. He was off balance. And Perkins has it for North Carolina. Worthy getting up slowly. Kelly has the ball. He's got it again. Worthy, the consensus All-American, has 18 points in the game. His career tourney record is 21. Here's John Thompson again talking to his club. North Carolina surprises me. They go back to man-to-man. -to -man. No, they're trapping out of it. And we have a foul. It's going to go on Michael Jordan as they trapped in the backcourt, stopping the clock with 222. Fred Brown will come in. Ed Spriggs will come in. Hancock and Gene Smith will check out. There's Dean Smith trying to ask for a walking violation. Now, here you go. Worthy went up so high because he knew Ewing was coming over. Maybe a little higher than be comfortable. Here comes Jordan. As I said, a very dangerous offensive rebounder. Goes in, changes to the left hand, and puts it up. That was only the second team foul against North Carolina. Just a little over two minutes left in this first half. Floyd, oh, beautiful. He was fouled on the shot and still had the concentration and the follow through to put it in. A one point lead now for North Carolina. Floyd with 10 points, and that's a foul on Eric Smith. Trying to reach around Jimmy Black. That's his second, and 16 fouls. They're one away from a shooting situation. And so Carolina will inbounds it with 2.04 in his first half. Dean Smith says, you know, I've never won this championship game, but there's only been two coaches in history that's been to the final four seven times or more. That's John Wooden and himself. Out to Black. Now they might be a little content, Billy, to let some time elapse. Well, they don't want to go right into the teeth of that zone defense with Ewing in the middle, but they've got it backed in there pretty good right now. Perkins against Ewing, intimidated a little bit, and down with the rebound comes Sleepy Floyd. At six foot three, only weighs 170, but he can jump. Nice play, rebound Ewing, and he's fouled. Good foul by Jordan. It was an easy play for Ewing. Sleepy Floyd keeping a lot of pressure on the defense. When he gets the ball, he not only does the great jump shot, but as we pointed out at the top of the show, he can penetrate to the baseline as well. 
Had Ewing this year shooting 61% from the free throw line in the regular season. Man who's learned to control that physical ability. A substitution, Buzz Peterson comes in. Jordan will check out. Thus far in this game, as you look at John Thompson and Eric Smith, Ewing has six points, four rebounds, five goal tens, and one block shot. He's covered all bases. Well, Patrick, a 61% free throw shooter, been to the line 164 times this year. It's good form. We were watching earlier. Now, watch it. So, as you call it, the good rotation on the ball. An excellent follow through for a big man. Many times a guy of this size has trouble with his foul shooting because his hands are so huge he can never get a nice feel of the ball from a standpoint of his fingertip control. Ewing does have that control and a beautiful follow through. Yeah, it's like a six foot guard up there. That's the first free throw. Georgetown has had the opportunity to shoot in this game. And Ewing gets both of them. Pat Ewing, that shows you the athletic ability of this big guy to stand up at the line like that. 30, 29, the Hoyas by one. One and a half to go, first half. The Worthy, Worthy catches that ball up in the air and it's all over. You can't get it away from him. Well, we talked about Worthy and Rodney McCray being the two best catchers of the ball I've seen in person this year. Now North Carolina spreading out a little bit. And right away, John Thompson's club said, if they're going to spread it, we're going to go back. And they have backed in there with Spriggs and Ewing really making it tough to penetrate inside. Gordy's looking for the shot. We'll bring it back out. You see the time. There it was a minute to go. I think we'll see North Carolina go for one now. And then I'm talking about take the last shot. One thing about Georgetown, but they come out and just kind of chest you out, don't they, when you pick up the ball. There's a reach in by Floyd. Big turnover. Eric Smith off the sleeve. Ewing's Floyd. got the lob. There it is. You can see that one coming. That again shows you Ewing never stops running on the court. He gets up and down the court so well. 32-29, the Hoyas of the lead. You see the time now, 26 seconds. That was a big turnover by Doherty. Here is Peterson. Look at the defense. The Hoyas jumping around, movement to go with that big size, and they can't get that ball inside right now. Here's the man who's been doing most of the damage. And a foul. Sleepy Floyd. That's been really their bread and butter is right over the middle. And here's Sleepy Floyd. Now, there are not many men in the country that can do what Pat Ewing did there. He came from 80 feet down the court to be in position to be on that fast break because, because he was playing right under the basket defensively. He never stops running, and that's what's making, what makes it so tough to keep up with him. You know what's interesting about that? Ewing may be their fastest man in some way, and they say Worthy is for North Carolina. You don't expect big men like that to cover the distance. Black and now going out. comes in. Going out will be Black with eight seconds. Sam Perkins 0 for 2 at the free throw line with two points. Now there's a lot of time on this clock. Georgetown does not have to rush coming down the court if these shots uh, go in or if they miss. A one and one. So at the other end, Ewing was able to connect on both. Now Perkins has the same opportunity and he can cut it to one. Perkins, who this summer worked on a construction job. He said he wanted to get tougher, stronger, and he's done that. Okay, full court pressure now by North Carolina, trying to occupy as much time bringing the ball up the court. They're doing that, but we're going to have a foul on Braddock. Now, think of this, what will happen right there. See, North Carolina is not in the one and one. They could let Sleepy Floyd bring the ball up the court and then foul him. Don't let him get in a position to shoot. They'll do it again. That's only 14 fouls, so they can do it again. Now, what they'll do is try to go ahead and foul as soon as the guy touched it too late. Spritz wide open. They let him have it, and that's going to end our first half. It's a one-point ball game. Pat Ewing, a last-minute reminder to the official. This game is shaping up just about the way we figured, right down to the wire. As the Hoyas, who have won 10 in a row with a 1.32-31 halftime lead, CBS Sports coverage of the 1982 NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this word from your local station. And I think that's what we're seeing out here. Although only a freshman, he's playing a very mature ball game. North Carolina will inbounds the ball. Interestingly enough, worthy in those points. 
Eight of those shots that he hit in the first half were all within the paint, within the lane area, to show you the good open shots that he was getting, the good percentage shots. Baseline, Doherty, and Doherty takes it up, and he's fouled. Doherty held his ground inside, looking for the pump fake. Nobody went for it. He was surrounded by both Spriggs well, and Ewing. Pat Ewing probably in that case figured he'd let Doherty release before he really went after the ball, but Doherty was able to pick up the two-shot foul. Spriggs commits the foul. Now, this is what John Thompson did Saturday. He comes out with a different lineup to start the second half. Both times he started Spriggs in the second half of play. He's doing that tonight. Doherty at the line with two points, now three points, and it's all tied up. Very interestingly, Dean Smith allows those players that would like to come out to shoot before a ball game in the morning, the day of the game, to come out. Only one player came out today. That was Matt Doherty. He has been a little concerned about his shooting. He has given Carolina the lead. 33-32. Here's the pressure. A little double team recognized very well by Georgetown. Red Brown to Ewing. Ball on the play. Three of these down and up, but he just took it inside. 12 points for the seven-foot freshman. That was a great shot. Both teams are throwing the ball over the press very well. This is the first time we've seen somebody put it on the ball on the floor very much. 34-33. The Hoyas. Michael Jordan. Oh, what a shooter he is. He had a slump earlier this year, and he just stayed after practice and shot the ball until he got it back again. Showed some concentration, kept his eye right on the rim, was not the awed by Ewing coming at him. Six points for Michael Jordan. A minute has gone by in the second half. Straight man-to-man -man by North Carolina. Floyd, push on. I think Perkins is guilty of pushing off inside. That's his first personal foul. And Floyd, who in that first half shot the ball very well, misses on that one. Good defense by Jimmy Black. Staying right with him, altering the jump shot a little bit. Perkins had his hand on Ewing all the way there, and it was well called by the official. Floyd in the first half hit five of eight from the field. Batted out of bounds by North Carolina. Georgetown will reset it. Pete oh, Smith says, wait a minute. Might have been. Did he call a foul? I don't believe so. Let's see. No, just an out-of-bounds situation. Well, Dean was up. He was in arms about it. Here comes Floyd, broken up. It's off of North Carolina. Doherty was trying to indicate it was off of Sleepy Floyd. What's so tough, the double team, the club that's on the floor right now for Georgetown, is that they really have three guards out there. Eric Smith can come out and play that way, so it allows Freddie Brown to be the guy who can be a recipient of passes rather than initiating all the offense. Brown is not an outstanding outside shooter. They like to get him to penetrate inside, and here he is with the ball now. Indicating the offense. Good patience now by Georgetown. Eric Smith out to Sleepy Floyd. 2-1-2 two, two zone now by North Carolina. Well, they found an opening there. Perkins and Ewing right, up oh against each other. It's off to Georgetown. But now Perkins normally would just grab that rebound without any trouble. But with Ewing, it's everything is contested off the boards. He's over his back, and he can pull it off with those long arms. And he's got about three to four inches of height advantage. There's Spriggs showing you how hard he works defensively. Look at that, only 9 of 43. That's an interesting statistic. Let's see how that proves in this game. 35-34, North Carolina with the lead. Eric Smith. Out to Floyd. He had to change his shot. Reach in by Jimmy Black. Black. The worthy. Broken. Oh, Take it away by Floyd. Great steal by Eric Floyd. Smith to Brown, Perkins backs him out of there. Nothing doing, and here comes Jimmy Black again, almost re-stealing the ball. Eric Smith, <laughs> Ewing follow tips, Ewing again, Ewing again, Ewing again. That play will be remembered in this game. Pat Ewing starting to take control inside. 14 points for Ewing, 36-35, Georgetown to the lead. Oh, is it tough under the boards. And Jordy backs it out, 17-20 remaining. Black to Worthy. Boy, he draws a crowd, and Brown fits the foul. Oh, wait a minute, they may count it on Spriggs. It could have been either one, it looked like. Well, you could hear the grunting down there under the boards on that last rebounding occasion where Ewing got his hands in the ball three or four times before putting it in. It was Brown with the foul. Well, Carolina number one, well, that hasn't been decided yet. Every Carolina player is bending over with hands on knees right now. That's usually a sign that kids are very, very tired. Here's where Georgetown's bench may come to help them. See the Carolina players bending over with hands on their knees. 
The substitutions, both freshmen, Bill Martin and Anthony Jones, come in. At the 17-15 mark, Doherty brings it out to Jordan. Doherty was really bent over as he was waiting inbounds that pass. Worthy off to Perkins. Look how they rotate around. Here's Jordan. He hit one here earlier, and he's going to try another one, and he's fouled. That basket would have counted had it gone in. That freshman is not... Not odd at all in this ball game. He takes the ball inside and penetrates. I think for North Carolina, they've got to figure out a way to get some production offensively out of Perkins. He only had four at halftime and hadn't been able to get a shot off here. North Carolina. At the line will be Jordan from Wilmington, North Carolina. I was talking about that shooting slump. He went in, Billy, and shot 82 extra shots after practice because it was the year of 1982. Walter Davis had a shooting slump in 77, so they shot 77 shots after practice. It got him back on track. He has seven points in this game. Of course, Walter Davis entered that tournament in 77 with a broken index figure, so he had somewhat of an excuse there. Well, that's the year that many people feel that Dean Smith had the best ball club. Lagarde was hurt, Davis was hurt, Ford was hurt. Now, after that basket, it's 37-32. North Carolina with the one-point lead, 16.57 to go. Here's Martin. Martin missed a couple of shots in the first half of play. And he lost his poise a little bit. It's going to be off of who? It's going to be off of North Carolina. When Billy Martin comes into the ball game, that allows Worthy to slough off and help Perkins inside. They're going to force Martin to show he can make a shot from outside. Jones is one of three. The one from the other is all for two. Steal by Worthy. Black the shooting. Ball. He intimidated him. Followed beautifully by Michael Jordan. Jordan with ten points. Smart move, though, by North Carolina to try to get the break going a little bit. Boy, he knew Ewing was in the vicinity. Changed the shot. Back door. Played before. No foul. Worthy went down trying to draw the foul, but to no avail. And who made the dish? Pat Ewing. Beautiful backdoor cut. The old blind pig play. One point lead for North Carolina. Look at Worthy get up in the air off to Black. It's like money in the bank when you throw the ball to that guy in the air. He just brings it down, and it's all over. 16 minutes to go. I'm surprised they don't go to Worthy now. He's got Billy Martin on him. Martin at 6-7, giving up a couple of inches. Perkins, yep, there, there they go. Is. Black oh, by Ewing. Ewing. Oh, did he time that perfectly? Off to Martin. Bill Martin loses the ball. He's having a tough time. He's turned the ball over a couple of times. John Thompson is unhappy. Spriggs will come back in for Georgetown. Here we see the over the head, but you can hear the big guy coming behind you, and Jimmy Black tries to get it up on the short hop. It's not there. And here comes Jordan again. We said a very dangerous offensive rebounder. What an awful feeling that's got to be, Billy, to know that Ewing is coming down your back. He is one of the best runners for a big man I have ever seen in basketball, and I think that's one of the assets he has. A lot of people don't rate it. Here's Ewing. Perkins, a jump hook. He got it off quickly. As was the case in that rebound a few minutes ago. Perkins will remember that one. Six points for Sam Perkins, 41-38. North Carolina with the lead. 15-14. One of the things anybody playing North Carolina has to do is keep the game tight. They don't want them to start to get into the delay game. Floyd, Floyd, cut off at the baseline, out to Spriggs. Eric Smith, Doherty, reach in by Worthy, off of Worthy, the quickness of James Worthy. And now Fred Brown will come in and Jones will come out. Jones and Martin, who came in to give the starters breathers, now come back out of the game. We've played over five minutes in the second half. Carolina with a three-point lead. And they're looking from high above the Superdome. 14 minutes, 57 seconds left in this game. North Carolina has a three-point lead. Gary Bender along with Billy Packer as Dean Smith trying for the first time to win the NCAA title. Mike, I need to ask Mike Swanson the question. How many team timeouts does North Carolina have so far? Have they used any? Well, I think what we're going to see, Gary, is Dean Smith, rather than going to the bench for the rest, may use the timeout for the legitimate rest for his team because he'd like to keep this first five in there the rest of the way. Important trip down the floor, as you mentioned. Georgetown cannot afford to drop too far behind and get North Carolina in that delay game. Scott's going to 
take care of that problem. Sensational outside jump shooting. 14 points for Sleepy Floyd. Here comes the pressure. 41-40, Carolina by one. Jimmy Black. You know, Jordan in this game, Billy, is the leading rebounder with seven. And he's had at least two of those, and he's put back up for scores on the offensive end. There's Worthy pushed off. Great play by Spriggs. Spriggs trying to help the official that time, claiming it was off of Worthy, but it was not. Spriggs was pushed by Worthy, still was quick enough. Now watch, see Worthy push him? He got away with a foul, and Spriggs was still quick enough to get over there. We've had eight lead changes. There's a steal. Oh, he has to stop. Eric Smith, though, recovers. And the tip by Ewing. Oh, what an effort by this Georgetown team. That was a tantalizing shot that finally dropped through. 16 points for Ewing. And now we have our ninth lead change of the game. One point lead for the Hoyas. Sleepy Floyd playing both ends of the court. Look at Spriggs out there on Worthy. Into Perkins. He's going to challenge Ewing. Blocked. Ewing got a piece of it, but Worthy is there. Well, one, two punch that time. That's what I talked about early in the game, that Perkins could occupy Ewing if they got him the ball. He makes him play honest. 20 points now for Worthy. Playing outstanding basketball. 43-42, North Carolina into Ewing. Perkins tries to stop him, but to no avail. He can put the ball down and move with it. Not good defense that time by North Carolina. You want to go after that ball if he puts it down that close. 44-43, Georgetown. Seesaw back and forth. 13-10 left in the game. Ewing coming out on Perkins. Look at him. Billy, stay with him. Jordan almost walked to the ball. Rebound by Ewing, and Ewing's all over the place. North Carolina may need a timeout right now. Their guys are getting very tired. Georgetown with the lead. They can add to it. Ewing's going to do that. Count and he's fouled by Sam Perkins. Perkins commits the foul. A three-point play possibility coming up. You can feel a little momentum change. The Carolina players getting tired. Now Dean Smith putting in Peterson. Here you go. Ewing on the inside, looking for that ball, giving a good target, keeping his hands up. Perkins goes with him, and when he flicks that wrist down. He comes down with a foul, Ewing with a chance for the three-pointer. Great camera work. You can just see the rotation on the ball. Ewing this year averaged only 12 and a half points a game, but he has 18 tonight to go with seven rebounds. Gives that ball a little massage. Oh. What a basketball player, and he's just a freshman. John Thompson has brought him along very, very carefully, and he has been nailing those free throws. He has 19 points. Uh oh. Ooh, almost. Well, what happened? The ball was tipped by defensive player, and then it hit under the backboard. North Carolina now trailing 47-43. Here's Peterson, the man you mentioned, that came in for Jordan. A steal it's by Floyd. Dean Smith needs a timeout. Floyd missed another layup. That's two now. One stuff that he missed in that one. He's all over, though, defensively. Here's Perkins. Sam Perkins, 6'9", shooting outside, cuts it to two. Big break for North Carolina. Sleepy Floyd really angry with himself for missing that one. Floyd is really showing why he was a consensus All-American, as is Worthy. They're living up to all the billing that they've had all year long. That's a foul on Black. Black trying to stay with Floyd somehow. Look at him, discuss the situation. Yep, there's Great a little, respect for each other. Little temper going right there, Jimmy Black, as we said. Had a great game against Granger. There he pushed him on off. Floyd's not going to be intimidated. You can count on that. First foul there they on are, Black. Coming back with a little elbow of his own. Third team foul on North Carolina. Black having to fly it a little closer. The defensive pressure. Floyd is open. Yeah, I tell you, it's just amazing what he's doing. Well, you cannot double team the ball and leave Sleepy Floyd alone. Back to a four point lead now for Georgetown. 11.55 to go, Buzz Peterson. Ewing comes down, loses it. Floyd is there, he saves it. Off it comes to Fred Brown. The momentum's changing. Brown mishandled the ball. He Look lost out. the handle. Look out. The basketball count and this foul is gonna go on Sleepy Floyd. Just when you 
you think the momentum is going all towards down. Worthy gets it. Sleepy Floyd's seen this play before. There's no way he's going to stop James Worthy on that dunk. And listen to the fans in here. They see it on the big screen over again, and they're just enjoying it. Two men from Gastonia, North Carolina, meeting there. They both went to the same church. They did not go to the same high school. They met one year in the state championship finals. The scoreboard comes into focus. 11.41 left. Georgetown with a 49-47 lead. Worthy with that magnificent play a while ago has set a tourney career high for himself of 22 points. And when he winds it up, I don't think there's any air left in the ballpark. You know, it's interesting. We've made the comparison and talked about the two kids from Gastonia, but Sleepy Floyd was not a highly recruited player as a senior in high school, whereas James Worthy was wanted by everybody in the country as early as his sophomore year in college. And yet they both turned out to be All-Americans. Kind of an interesting story. Chance for this three-point play for Worthy. It's a one-point game. North Carolina has been doing a lot of double teaming, but what has been killing them is that Sleepy Floyd's not handling the ball, so he's always away from the double team to be in a shooting position. And he really moves off the ball, doesn't he? Eric Smith. Ed Spriggs will bring it back out to Sleepy Floyd. He wants to shoot again. That's one of the few he hasn't hit from there. Here's where they're bringing it out to Jordan. Jordan walked to the ball, I believe. Yes, he did. Credit Eric Smith. Any team that wins the national championship is great in transition play. They can go from offense to defense well. Eric Smith back there waiting on the pass, and that's why Jordan took his eye off it. Ten turnovers now against North Carolina. 11-12 left in the game. Already coming out. Here is Briggs. Briggs handles the ball and moves so well for a man at six foot nine. They have great confidence in that ability. It's Perkins playing Spriggs. Worthy now over on Ewing. Reach in. Jimmy Black trying to stay with Sleepy Floyd, and he's fouled. Jordan coming across. He was creating things inside. Floyd, when he has the ball, penetrates, and when he doesn't have the ball, he offsets beautifully to get the open jumpers. Second foul on Michael Jordan, fourth. There it is, Ewing and Floyd, the one-two punch. Worthy, been leading the way for North Carolina. Again, Jordan with those 10 points is the leading rebounder. 49-48. The Hoyas with the advantage. They've got the lob to Ewing. Worthy is really working him hard, but Ewing's so much bigger. Open is Eric Smith. It's a roll. 12 points for Eric Smith. 51-48. Jordan, that was Ewing, just got his hands up. Hit the side of the backboard. Ewing, oh, if he'd have made that, that would have been incredible. Now here you got a four-on-one break. Jordy to Jordan, Spriggs out on him. Good coverage defensively, he still hit it. Oh, what presence of mind. It's amazing what the freshman can do. A few years ago, freshmen weren't eligible for varsity play, and now they come out here, and they're the stars of the game. North Carolina goes back in their 2-1-2 matchup zone. Jordan, the fourth freshman in Dean Smith's tenure in North Carolina to start from the first game on. And you can see why. North Carolina players are standing still defensively. There's no pressure on the ball. They're very, very tired. And there's Sleepy Floyd going right through the zone. 9.45 left in the game. Eric Smith on the move. He draws the crowd, and he's fouled. Nice power move inside. These guys, I don't think that hairstyle is going to be popular very soon. There's James Worthy going out. The North Carolina players losing some resiliency in their leg. Georgetown much fresher by going to that deep bench. Worthy committed that foul. That is his first personal. Smith at the line. You know what's good about this game, Billy? Thus far, no foul difficulty. Both teams able to really go after each other. Officials doing a good job. 67% free throw shooter. He has 13 points. John Thompson, the ever-present town. John Thompson was a high school coach, had a player by the name of Donald Washington, who he adopted as his own son when his parents passed away, and he was the player that Dean Smith recruited, and that's how they started their friendship. And, of course, in 76 with the Ten Olympic seconds. Team. Ten seconds. Ten and seconds. Ten seconds. And he just made it. And he almost stepped out of bounds. He's fouled instead by Fred Brown. Big, big play by Fred Brown. The Jimmy Black to be able to have the presence to get that ball over the half-court line because it was very close to 10 seconds. 
And that is going to be against Brown, his fourth personal. Worthy will come back in. Dean Smith trying to save those timeouts. Gene Smith will come in and replace him. We've got to get Brown out of there with the four personals. And yep. During all that, yep. Worthy yep. and Hancock were kind of pushing, trying to jockey for position. Right. Worthy was trying to take a position on the court. Hancock came up and tried to prevent him. Hank Nichols talking to him there. Say, fellas, let's just take it easy. Now Gene Smith is in. There he is. He's a defensive standout. They get him in there to kind of pick up the tempo defensively, replacing Brown at the 930 mark of this game. A three-point lead for Georgetown. And he comes in there fresh. Now you got Hancock very fresh. And you have Gene Smith fresh. Look at Ewing out here. Clear out in the backcourt playing defense. There's your time left. Smith now picking up Jimmy Black. And Smith can play the defense. And he gets picked up a foul. That was a costly foul. Smith and Freddie Brown picking up two cheap fouls. Ties things up in the team foul situation. Is that the sixth? That's the sixth, Billy. The next one, one will be one and one. One more, and they'll be shooting free throws. Carolina had five team fouls. They are very good at not getting into that one-on-one -on -one situation, and they'll be playing a lot more zone. There's, There's another one. Now, you know what caused that? Hancock fighting for position. Remember before when the ball was out of bounds? And I think Hank Nichols saying, we're not going to have any of that. And Bormey calls a quick foul. Now they're in the bonus with 9-11 to go, and three fouls in a matter of seconds, and all of them way away from the basket. Very cheap touch fouls by the guys that came off the bench to put a little defensive pressure on. But Hancock picked up that ball with a little altercation that took play a while ago. Worthy with 23 points. In the free throw line, he's been hitting almost 90%, and we just jinxed him with that one. But look at the rebound by Jordan. Jordan just has been outstanding on the boards. Gordy, beautiful pass to Worthy. Worthy with 25. A one-point lead for the Hoyas. 8.50 left in this game. Trying to shake Jimmy Black loose on the man-to-man. -man. North Carolina going back to the man-to-man -man now. Look at oh. the shoving between Perkins and Ewing. Floyd, that was a reach in by Jordan. Jordan is playing superb basketball to Worthy. <laughs> Going to be a timeout by Georgetown right now. A timeout. And he's got oh. a foul. Well, Doherty commits a foul before the timeout. Matt Doherty has committed a foul. Now, the key thing here is, did the timeout, was the timeout granted before the foul? And I believe they're going to say it was. That's exactly what they did. Yeah, John Thompson is arguing. It's a big call. Now, John's got to be careful here. He's got to be careful. He could get the T and it would kill him because it's his ball. He's got to be careful here. You don't want a technical foul called on you, a two-shot foul and lose possession of the ball. So no foul on Doherty. Instead, Georgetown gets the timeout with 8.27 to play. John really hot. He needs to get... North Carolina took the lead a moment ago, and we're going to show you some great passing. Cross-court pass. Doherty coming to meet the ball. One play ahead of himself. He actually knew he was going to pass that ball before he made the catch, and there's Worthy, and there was no chance for Ewing. He got there late. Now look at the pushing and shoving as we come back to the live action. There, the guy's trying to get ready defensively for this inbounds play by Georgetown. North Carolina with a one-point lead. Well, both teams want to make sure they've got the matchup. I thought North Carolina would probably be showing a lot more zone now, but they're still out there man-to-man. -man. Jordan playing tough on Fred Brown. Brown back in, playing with four personal fouls. Dumps it off to Ewing. 21 points for Ewing. 55-54, Brown with the steal. Nice pass, but Smith can't handle it. Off it comes to Worthy. Eight minutes to go in the game. <laughs> Sleepy Floyd attacking Worthy, and Worthy just teasing him with that ball. Number 21, Black and Floyd against each other. Into Worthy, foul on Spriggs. Spriggs is a fellow that was a starting center a year ago. You've got to give him a lot of credit. Could you imagine what it feels like going into your senior year as the incumbent starting center? knowing that a guy like Ewing is recruited and you're going to have to take a lesser role. And instead of putting your head down, staying with the team, giving great leadership and accepting that role and making Ewing an even better player. And he has taken that responsibility and practice to push him. Worthy at the line. 
line. He's missed a couple of free throws there. And he's missed them short, Gary, both times. He is one of three. It's still Georgetown with the advantage. 55-54. Seven minutes, 40 seconds to go in this championship game. To Spriggs. Spriggs is fouled. Worthy committing the foul. That's the second on James Worthy. The 16 foul. One more, and they'll be shooting the bonus. What's so interesting here, you have two really well-coached clubs. They're sticking with their offense, and when you figure things get a little frayed, clubs that are well-taught, as these two teams are, go right back to the basic fundamentals. Buzz Peterson checking in. Last year, North Carolina lost to Indiana 63-50. to Their average margin of loss had been about 12 points. But this one has been a one-point game back and forth. Spriggs. Burton free throws are not finding the mark. Spriggs, a 68% free throw shooter, only went to the line 44 times this year. Spriggs can give them a two-point advantage. 56-54, the pressure by the Hoyas. They have been taking a lot of time getting this ball up. They've got to hurry, and they find Peterson. Buzz Peterson, nice pass to Worthy. It's off of Georgetown. That was Smith again, coming from behind. Just no let-up defensively. And so North Carolina will inbounds at the 725 mark. Both these teams have won 30 games this year. Best records. Dean Smith's tenure and the best record in the history of Georgetown. Last time they were in the finals, 1943. They lost to Wyoming. Georgetown likes to keep that pressure on with the man-to-man. -man. Not a good pass. Not a good pass. Sprague saved it in. Boy, the agility of him is something to see. Brown almost lost it. Bad pass. That's twice Brown has lost the handle when he's tried to pass the ball. Exactly that. Right. Jimmy Black pushing off. That's 10 turnovers against Georgetown. As Peterson will check out, Jordan, 23, checks back into the game. There's Denny Crum. And he had a, such a great performance out of his team here on Saturday. You mentioned the intensity of that game. 1980, he won it all. Here is Black. The chance now on this trip down the floor to tie this ball game up. 6.44 left in it. One to check out the defense. Oh, Ewing comes down with a cheap slap. Very costly foul. Now that's his third. Another one, and obviously it would change the complexion of defensively what John Thompson wants to do. And he's going to talk to him. Going to talk to him. Carolina is worthy. Well, you don't get to the Final Four if you're not worthy, and that goes for all the teams that have been here. Outstanding comeback performance by Houston here Saturday also. You're down 14 to nothing. You figure you throw in the towel and still they battle back. That's nine points in the game for Perkins. He is now three of five from the line and a chance to tie it up. Really, sometimes you get to the championship game and it doesn't work out the way you think it would. But this is something, isn't it? This is a great one. 56 all. The pressure now by North Carolina. There's Here we, we, have, the, here we have the double teams, but with these three guards in the game right now, Smith, Brown, and Sleepy Floyd, they handle that press very well. This game has been tied eight times. Fred Brown trying to work into Ewing, broken up nicely by Jordan, but saved by Ewing with a good hand. See, they're going to give Fred Brown the shot. Therefore, it's tough for him to feed Ewing because Jordan's going to drop back in there. Brown not known for the outside shooting ability. There's a steal by Worthy. He'll show some speed here. And he's fouled. That foul will go on Eric Smith. I can see why Dean Smith says Worthy's the fastest player they've got. Well, he, you got to remember this, Gary. He's dribbling the ball. Those guys are running without the ball, and he's beating them down the court. You know what I mean? It's a little different. You're in a foot race, and you're running without the ball. The other guy's got to keep up with the ball. And he's 6'9 and weighs 220. 27 points, a career high for James Worthy, and he's trying to add to that at the 6.04 mark. Some people, I'm sure, when they look at All-American lists, they say, how can you pick a guy that's only averaging 15 points a game? But he just fits in where they need him. And here's an example, 28 tonight. Well, basketball is a team game. He's short again. Tipped up. Almost followed by Jordan, and Jordy's got it. Boy, bounced off of him. No whistle. Michael Jordan has 
led both teams in rebounding tonight, and he got in again on another offensive rebound. 57-56, Carolina. We're seeing a little four corners look right here. Worthy, out to Jordan. This is a half of a four corners. 5.41 to go, North Carolina sitting on it. Ewing's got to be careful, he has three fouls, playing Perkins black, almost lost it, and he's fouled by Ewing, and that's four. Now Patrick Ewing has to be careful, and John Thompson called a great timeout here, because Patrick Ewing is so aggressive, he tries to chase against this four corners, and he's gonna pick up cheap fouls. Now, with Ewing in foul difficulty, you think North Carolina will go at him, or will they just continue what they're doing? No, I think they're gonna spread it in what they call their 4C offense. And you gotta go back now to 1977, Gary, when North Carolina got the lead on Marquette, and they tried to go ahead and spread it out in the four corners. Marquette stayed back in like a passive zone and let the clock go down a little bit. And by doing that, when North Carolina wasn't able to execute, Marquette finally got control of the game. But we really have a coaching clinic going on right now. John Thompson have to, having to prepare his players for the four corners. Dean Smith outlining exactly what they want to do execution-wise, making sure nobody tries to make the spectacular play. You saw that sign a while ago to Albuquerque. That's where the NCAA Final Four is going to be next year. You know, Gary, I, I love to look at this old newspaper right up about the last time Georgetown was in the Final Four. And, it, and one of the things that was funny on the, on the clipping coming out of New York, the big centers hold the spotlight for the championship game between Georgetown and Wyoming. The centers were 6'6 six, six and 6'5. Six, that's just a big size guard now. And an off forward, Dean Smith. Now in a pretty good situation. A one point lead, four fouls on Pat Ewing. And the way they can set on the ball, he's started to maybe have that momentum switch just a little bit in his favor. Black at the line, two points. He has six assists in this game. You might recall that Villanova game in the East Region final, he had 10 assists. He's second only to Bill Ford, all-time North Carolina assist list. He had over 500 assists in his career, and now important free throws coming up. 73% free throw shooter. One and one. It's back to a two-point lead. First time I've seen Pat Ewing look up at the clock. He normally concentrates totally on the game. You think he's thinking a little bit? A three-point advantage now. Still five and a half minutes to go. Here's the double team by Black. Good effort there by Brown. Kept his poise off to Floyd. Out to Eric Smith. Jordan dropping back. You said that earlier. They'll let him shoot the ball. Straight man to man. Into Ewing. And we're going to have a foul on Worthy. He's over the back. Over the back of Brown, and that's three on James Worthy. That was a big play by Freddie Brown, who hasn't been shooting that much. We'll see the play inside. Ewing comes up a little short on this jumper. Nice technique, good follow-through. There's Brown, a big fellow, an excellent call by the officials. And in addition to a super championship game, we'd have to say this is one of the best officiated games of this caliber I've seen in a long time. Now they're shooting free throws, 17 fouls, two points for Brown, who's not a very good free throw shooter. During the regular year, he shot 63%. It doesn't matter now. It really doesn't. He's a gutty ball player. And now he can cut it to one point. We well, gave him the MVP award the other for Saturday's play. What did he have? Six points? Four. Four points. 59-58. Georgetown is eight of nine from the free throw line. They haven't been there that often, but when they have been, they have taken advantage of it. And here North Carolina is 13 and 19. Here comes the spread. Perkins and Ewing. The Doherty, Ewing and Perkins still pushing around. Remember now, Ewing playing with four personals. Four minutes, 45 seconds left in the game. A one point lead for Carolina. North Carolina looking for a backdoor layup here. This is not a complete stall. They are offensively looking for the backdoor layup. Crowd starting now to get into this one. Last and the only time North Carolina won it all was in 1957. There's a steal by Floyd. 
that oh, he stepped out of bounds. Now watching this offense right now, the guy that seems to be a little shaky is Michael Jordan because he's catching the ball, putting it on the ground, and losing his dribble, then picking it up, and everybody's overplaying. Ewing this year has fouled out of five games, only one time in tournament play. That was against Oregon State. They have Ewing matched up on Worthy now. See if North Carolina tries to take advantage of it. Four minutes, ten seconds to go. Black. Boy, this is something that Carolina has had as a trademark for so long. Attention mounting as we approach, and exactly four minutes now left in the game. People say that they don't like the stall, but if you tell me there's not the tension created by this. The stall started at the 5-11 mark, and you see the time remaining. And another thing this does for North Carolina, it gives them a chance to rest a little bit as they were getting very tired. Jimmy Black tries the backdoor, cuts, not there. It'll be North Carolina's ball. Gene Smith will come in. That gives John Thompson an opportunity to get an outstanding defensive player in. Brown will come out of the ball game. Brown still let, may have a little trouble with that thigh, that leg that's wrapped heavily. So now Smith is in. 335 left. Both teams into one and one. Both coaches have conserved their timeouts very well. Remember this, the next hell ball would go to Georgetown. Is Jordan on the oh, what a layup. He put that ball up about 12 feet. Left hand. He has 14 points, 10 of them in the second half of play. 61-58. That was just amazing. An offhand, a left-hand shot. They've got to concentrate now on Sleepy Floyd. Georgetown can't take an awful lot of time. Three minutes now left in the game. Down by three. John Thompson looking to go ahead and maybe get a timeout. He's trying to tell his club what to do without the timeout. North Carolina in the matchup zone. Georgetown has only one timeout left, Billy. That's why he didn't want to use it. He's trying to instruct his club without it. Floyd's going to get ready for a jumper. Out to Gene Smith. They don't want him shooting. He's not that good a shooter from outside. Ewing's going to try it. He Point ball game with two and a half minutes to go. 23 points for Pat Ewing. 2.30. Ewing with 23, his career high. Out it comes to Black. Worthy picked up by Spriggs. Now he posted on the time, 2.15. Georgetown can get themselves a little tired right here because they're doing all the work right now. Doherty. Both teams in the bonus. Oh, the fouls would send them to the line. The hell ball would go to Georgetown. Less than two minutes to go. 156. That's a dangerous pass, that lazy pass going cross court. Here's Ewing, he can't afford to reach. You saw Gene Smith try to sneak in from behind. 1 minute 40, now it's on your screen. Now North Carolina wanting to change their offense. Here's Jordan who made that remarkable drive a while ago. He has nine rebounds to go with his 14 points tonight. Eric Smith hurt his leg on that play. He's really limping. He's giving chase to Jordan and he almost pulled it off. He commits the foul. You can see he is limping. That's four on Eric Smith. Some reach. He's quite an athlete. Start talking about basketball players that would have some potential in the defensive backfield in football. He's one of them. He's shaking it off. John Thompson looked him over to see if he wanted to stay in the ball game, and he seems to be all right. See John Thompson talking to his club now. He does not want to use that timeout. Dean Smith has quite a few left. Now in this ball game, Doherty has hit two of two from the line with four points. The only guy that hasn't shot perfectly from the line in the starting five is Worthy. He's two of five. This is in the second half I'm talking about. And at the line, Matt Doherty. He hit some big free throws you might remember in tournament play in the East region. Now with a big one and one. Long, that wasn't even close. And now Georgetown can take the lead. 116 left. That's 10 rebounds for Pat Ewing. Eric Smith off to Pat Ewing. Hancock was wide open under the basket. Nobody saw him. I figure Sleepy Floyd's going to go for the jumper. Is he ever? Fake beautifully once, twice, gets a roll, and the Hoyas lead by one. What?
What a play by Sleepy Floyd. 52 seconds. 18 points in the game for the All-American. And as we suspected, it's going right down to the wire. And Georgetown's going to go into the zone. They are not going to come out and chase. And North Carolina now cannot go to the four corners. And with that odd point, we're going for a game-winning or right. a losing shot. And Dean Smith asks and gets timeout. That was the 15th lead change we've had in this ball game on that remarkable suspension in midair by Sleepy Floyd. We'll be back. You see the time remaining, 32 seconds to win the championship. Georgetown adds the lead, and I just cannot believe this play that Sleepy Floyd made. Well, you knew he was going to take it. He's a money player, a double fake. Had a guy in front, a guy behind, and Georgetown getting some nice bounces now. Ewings did the same thing right before that. What it does, Gary, it changes the offensive philosophy completely for North Carolina. They, with the lead, could force Georgetown to be man-to-man. -man. Now Georgetown back in the zone. Most coaches, though, with a timeout, go ahead and change their defense just to throw the other team off stride. Let's see if Georgetown now comes out man to man. Georgetown still has one timeout left. North Carolina has four, 32 seconds to go. A one point lead for Georgetown. No, they stay in the 1-3-1 with Ewing in the middle. They've got to look to get it in there. You can't with a shot blocker like Ewing take so much time. Gordy to Black. The time, 18. Michael Jordan, 14 seconds. Brown. Look for look for Sleepy Floyd. Look. Oh, he threw it to the wrong man. He threw it to Worthy. It's over. It's over. He's fouled by Eric Smith. Fred Brown somehow or another threw the ball into the hands of James Worthy. Look at Dean Smith, totally in control. Everybody going crazy. See if he doesn't call a timeout to settle things down. The emotion. Jordan is down. He is down and now getting up. There's Jimmy Black. Black. That's Black. He can't believe it. He's been on three straight ACC championship teams, but never won at all. But I tell you, the guy you got to feel bad for is Fred Brown. It's like he looked back. I don't know why or what happened. Let's look at it. Here it is right here. He, you know what might have flashed in front of him right there? He saw the blue and the white go by and just lost concentration. That was a smart foul right there. We've got two seconds to go. Look at this. The emotion of NCAA basketball. Now, now Worthy just has to get that ball up there. If he hits the rim, he's in good shape, even if he misses the shot, because Georgetown in bad shape foul-wise. They have Eric one Smith, timeout left. Eric Smith has fouled out of the ball game. And after all of that, he did as he tried to come back and double up and come up with the ball. Dean Smith looked at James Worthy and said, make these. <laughs> what else? Smith leaves the game with 14 points, three rebounds. Now, Worthy is the man that I guess should be resting on his shoulders. He's had eight, 28 points tonight, but he's hit only two of five from the free throw line. It's a very, very big shot. Now they're going to call timeout. Is Georgetown calling that? No, I can't believe John Thompson would have called that. I believe Dean Smith did, just to reorganize the whole situation. He called his fifth? Very surprising, unless John wants to just give him a talk to him about the future. Because now he can't do anything other than throw the long pass if the shot is missed. Well, he's run out of timeout. That's right, that's his fifth. And so even if they get the rebound on this, two seconds, there's nothing left you can do. That's right. Very interestingly, in the rule changes in basketball, and thinking ahead into next year, although this game certainly is not over, one change we're going to see, the jump ball situation. If the defense creates the jump ball, the ball will turn over to the defense and disregard the pointing of the arrow, which I think most coaches have asked for. The clock, we won't see that at all. And what we may also see, there's been some talk, if a game goes into overtime and a player is fouled out, he gets an opportunity to come back with one more foul. Well, for so many years, they said about Dean Smith, he couldn't win the big one. He's two seconds away from winning the big one now. The seventh time he's been to the Final Four, the fourth time in the championship game. And let's watch. We'll just watch and see what develops.
call it a two-shot intentional, evidently. No one moved anyway. Hey, That's what it they was. called it a two-shot intentional. We never did get that signal. Now there's where they could have used the timeout. And Georgetown loses it. North Carolina has won the 1982 NCAA championship. Thank <laughs> you. 